And then the Yankees go out there. They miss on their top target in Luis Castillo. They get Montez. They get two bullpen arms. They already added Ben Attendi. How come the Yankees can make moves a day before the deadline or two days before the deadline? And the Mets are w- twiddling their thumbs, waiting for the last second. Oh, well, we're not trading this. We're not trading that. We're worried about Pete Crow Armstrong. We're not going to go up and g- give up prospects. I mean, what, what are they? Let's just nothing to do with this year. Go make a freaking move. Yeah, and this is what annoys me about it the most is the Mets don't want to give up a top prospect for a rental. Well, the Yankees really didn't give up right. a top prospect. You want to see what the, I guess the highest they gave up was maybe 12th in this whole deal? Or was there a no, guy? No, number five. They give up. Number five. All right. Number five in the Montez deal. Right. They right. Give up, and, but they also got a, a reliever back. They gave up two top right. 10 prospects. So, in. okay. So, fine. So, but we're talking about a couple of guys that are untouchable at the top of the Mets prospect list that they don't want to deal. Sure. There's other guys that you can deal. They shouldn't have to deal that. You shouldn't have to deal those guys to be able to bring people in. If they don't upgrade the bullpen today, that is going to be a disaster. I think they will upgrade the bullpen. You're not worried about a bat? Of course I am. I said the same yeah, thing right. yesterday about it. But, you know, Trey Mancini, who should have never been traded, by the way, this is why baseball sucks sometimes, <laughs> is you got this team who has been so bad for so long. They have no fans. Nobody's watching right. on TV. They're above 500, and they trade a fan favorite and one of their best players because, oh, yeah, I mean, we're not really in it. You're a couple of games out of a wild card, for Christ's sakes. You've lost 100 games for how many years in a row? But anyway. Uh, well, so- how about the Brewers trading Hater, too, a place yeah. you point like you're in the playoffs the Brewers are a playoff team but because they're thinking long term hey we can't afford to sign this guy or whatever trade him now that does suck if you're a Brewers fan thinking hey we're in the playoffs you're trading Josh Hader away imagine no being an Orioles fan who sat through all this for the last number of years you? the worst team in baseball you had an over under number of 60 wins this year everybody expects you to be terrible again you're a game above 500 let's just trade away one of your best players when you're a couple games out of a wild card i'd be livid and why bother but anyway um yeah there's a couple of bats that are that are not available anymore and i really think and vasquez was a guy Mm -hmm. that the mets were looking at he's not available mancini was a guy that the mets were looking at he's not available so basically i don't know what the hell the red sox are doing they trade vasquez then they bring in tommy fam are they going to trade jd martinez is this deal with the Cubs going to happen? I know you don't love Contreras, but right At now, this point, that's the best that <laughs> solves your problems. Yeah, that, that's the best option, Contreras. And I do think the Mets are just basically waiting, saying, okay, you're not going to get a better offer than, or you're not going to get what you think you can get for Contreras right. and Robertson. And the longer that it goes here, the more I think the Mets are probably right. I'm not saying be stupid, but why is it always them? How come the Astros can upgrade? How come the Yankees can upgrade? Every other team out there is making moves left and right. And the Mets, who actually need something to be done, who are, by the way, on fire right now. The Rocket is launching for this team. They swept the Yankees. They've won seven straight. It's a season high as far as win streak goes. DeGrom is coming back tonight. They're getting Trevor May back. They're getting McCann back. They have a five-game series with Atlanta. Atlanta's making moves themselves. The Mets right now, this is it. This is the final chance to add the reinforcements to build this team that can legitimately go out there and win a World Series. And I don't want to... Look, if they don't make a move, that's one thing. But already we're hearing, dating back to Friday, if we can't get what we want, we're ready to bring up Vientos. I don't want to hear that crap! Right. Nobody does. No self-respecting Met fan wants to hear that. And my answer to that question of why these other teams are doing it and the Mets are not is an answer that I don't think you're going to like, but I think this is what's happening. The Yankees and the Astros have recent postseason experience where they know what they need to be able to get to the World Series and win it, what they were deficient in in previous years. They know that it's going to be a collision course for them in the playoffs, and the Mets... Even though Buck Showalter's been around forever mm-hmm. and Sandy Alderson's been around forever, whatever, this group right here is new to this, and they're in love with themselves, and they think it's the start of something as opposed to let's capitalize on this and make this the year, and they're tiptoeing around it where these other teams are like, F that, right. we got to win a World Series right now. Yeah. The- which I don't think is the mentality right now at City Field. I-, I just, and also, like, think about this. This is how you know that the mentality is wrong at City Field. Why would they ever reference a trade from last year? Like, when have you ever heard that before? Well, we got burned last year. We weren't happy with that last year. So now we're hesitant this year. It makes no sense. Think about the prospects the Yankees gave up. I, I forget where what the other deal was that they made with the A's years ago where they gave up, like, Mason Williams and other 
similar deal where you gave up maybe two top ten prospects and other. We never heard of those major no. minor leaguers. They never made it to the major leagues. Going to be the same thing. They rip off the A's. They get Montez, the guy that they need. They add a bullpen arm. You're never going to hear of these guys again. So why are the Mets? Is it more because of the ineptitude years past that they didn't build a farm system properly, so they feel like they have nothing there to give, no depth? I, I don't understand. They what don't. The I don't think is. they look at this year the way we look at this year. But then they're then they're dumber than we think. Uh, but but that's what I think. I honestly believe that they don't think that this is the year that you push the chips in the middle of the table. Because Steve Cohen, as I said, he talked out of both sides of his mouth when he became the owner. It was, I want to win a championship in the next three to five years, multiple championships right. in the next three to five years, and also said, I want to build a farm system and be able to have su- sustained success like the Dodgers. So it's like sometimes you can't do both of those things at the same time. you got to trade some of those prospects to go all in to win a championship. But I think what they're thinking is, we need to build. We've got a really good team, but we can't, you know, sell the farm and forego the future for this particular year because really this is the first time that we are experiencing this with this team where the Yankees and Astros, I mean, especially the Yankees, how many times right. can they come up short in the postseason the last number of years? They have to do this. They had absolutely no choice. But to fix the problems they have with the roster at the trade deadline, where the Mets seem a little bit complacent. Now, we've got hours to go. We might sound like idiots by 6 o'clock, and maybe they pull off this trade with the Cubs, and we love the fact that Contreras and Robertson are here. But it just doesn't – it seems like they are happy to go to work with what they have and to keep the farm system intact. Which is unacceptable. And the worst part of it is – see, here's the thing with the Yankees, and – I get what you're saying. You're right. The Yankees sense. And there's been reports that are saying, hey, they know this is their year. They want to go all in. They believe this team is different. So they're going to go maybe above and beyond. But Brian Cashman and the Yankees always upgrade their team. They always do. You know, Now, he may be reluctant to give up top prospects. Maybe they're missing out on top guys or top targets, which is not – we're not accustomed to that dating back to, you know, the dynasty years or whatever. The yeah. Yankees always get their man generally. All right, in this case, they don't get Castillo, but they still go out there and upgrade. They got their guy in Benetendi. Look what the Yankees have done already. By the way, would you be shocked if you hear that they get Juan Soto? I mean, like, I know that that's... You know, I think I would be, actually. I think I, I would I be. wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't with the Yankees. You never freaking know. I they think they're up, trying, well, they but I would be surprised. T- they still didn't give up any of their top prizes. I don't think it's going to happen, but I would not be shocked. Whereas the Mets, the, the it's not that you're not... It's not the inactivity, and it's not that they are in dire need for a big-time piece... Because of their, because of them being smart, they don't need to overpay for an arm right now. They locked up Max Scherzer yeah. in, in the offseason, which is a great move. They traded for Chris Bassett, great move before the year. Right now, all they need is a right-handed bat. It shouldn't cost that much. But we're hearing the crap that I'm hearing. That's what drives me nuts because it's a combination of the Yankees always go out there and put the best team that they can, always are aggressive, and the Mets haven't been in years past. They make a move last year. We started to think, okay, this is good under new ownership. And then it you know, leaking out starting Friday. Well, in the event that the Mets don't want to go out there and get one of the right-handed bats and don't give up this guy, they're ready to bring up prospects. That We should never hear that from a New York organization. Yeah, and then one of the things I saw from Andy Martino and others yesterday was when all these other trades were happening – And you saw guys going to different places that were Mets targets. It was, this reinforces the fact that the Mets are not going to trade their top prospects for a rental. And I'm thinking, but it hasn't been top prospects that have gone out and gotten these guys. And that's the thing that is really, really frustrating is you should be able to figure out a way to upgrade this team with guys other than Vogelbach and Naquin and some real, real difference makers without trading Francisco Alvarez. Uh. And I don't know why they just put up on CBS Sports Network the picture of you. Is that live? What is going on here? <laughs> I don't know what's going on uh, with the monitor. But yeah. anyway, uh, they put up the picture of Fat Sal from 2000 <laughs> out, of, <laughs> out of nowhere. It just it just popped up there. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so we, we will see where they go. And I also think that they're really counting on this Jacob deGrom thing to work out to the best of what it could work out to. And I think that they're really looking and thinking – like, all right, we're getting DeGrom back. That's a better trade acquisition than anybody could get. And they're looking at it through that lens as opposed to this guy should have been here 
anyway for the entire year, but we right. haven't seen him pitch in a year. Well, look, it's fine, and I'm going to be excited, just like everybody else should be getting one of the best pitchers. You know, for the sport, I think it's a good thing, especially for the Mets, obviously, getting DeGrom back in that rotation. Who knows how long it's going to last? We talked about it yesterday. You know, there's still going to be – you're going to be nervous until you see him actually go out there four, five, six starts in a row, and then you could forget about the injury uh, history with DeGrom. But they still need to upgrade. I just – the philosophy will never make sense to me. We're not saying be reckless. We're not saying go give up top prospects for a rental player. Figure out a freaking way to get it done. I don't care if you got to take on bad contracts or what. If other teams can make these moves, you know, then they should be able to do it. And I don't want to even hear about the depth of their farm system. Your farm system, you tell me nobody, no other team out there thinks the Mets have any player that's worthy other than the top guys in their farm system. Give me a break. It just doesn't add up. And stop leaking the nonsense to, like, let fans be prepared. Hey, we're ready to do this in case we can't make a move. Nobody wants to hear that. I'm not saying make a move just for the sake of making a move. We're saying make a move because you have a team that can legitimately win. Upgrade the friggin' thing, please. Yeah, and that's that's where I think that that there's a disconnect between fans like you and I who have had it with bad Mets baseball, have had it with years without a championship, are dying for that. And I think the Mets are thinking, we got a really good team here right now, and we're building and we're building, and we want sustained success, and we really don't want to just go for it this year and pay for that in years in the future. But what we're saying is, you can do both. Right. You can protect the farm system, you can protect the future, you can also go for it this year, which is exactly what the New York Yankees are doing. If you're a Yankees fan yesterday and this morning, you were absolutely thrilled with your general manager. And I know that he was getting a lot of crap going into the season. And, you know, you didn't get Correa. You didn't go out and get right. Freddie Freeman. And you took the the second and third choices and sometimes a fourth choice in this offseason. And then and, and you didn't sign Aaron Judge. He was getting roasted. But everything that he's done, including at the deadline, at least on paper, we'll see how it works out, has been spectacular since. And that's what you want from a team that's in contention that wants to win. You feel like the Yankees know that if they don't win this year, it is a total mess for them. Where you feel like the Mets are like, hey, remember how bad last year was? Right. And look how good this year is. And maybe next year could be even better. As opposed to like, it's like they're happy to be there. You and, know? and regardless of result, you have to respect. That's why the Yankees are the gold standard. Yep. You have to respect what they've done. You're right. Think about it. We get In this town, we've been getting calls for years. Oh, Cashman should be fired and this and that. They go for it every freaking year. He knows what they need. And I'm not saying the Mets don't know what they need, but for whatever reason, they seem like reluctant to go get it or don't have the ability to go get it. I, I Look, you do the math. I'm just a messenger. I mean, the Yankees go out there and get it. They got it done. They missed out on Castillo. They needed Montez. They get him. They needed bullpen help. They get him. The Yankees are the best team in baseball. They've added an all-star outfielder, a starting pitcher that should be a number two, two legitimate relievers to add to their bullpen. The Mets are not the best team in baseball, and they've added Vogelbach. Like it doesn't, and they're talking about bringing up the yeah, Like I it know. doesn't add up. I, I really, I really hope that the Javier Baez situation, but it sounds like it is. This Javier Baez situation last year has clouded their minds in all sorts of ways. Not even with the Pete Crow Armstrong thing, but I think that he came in and he was a terrible clubhouse guy. That's another thing that I think is on their minds, which is a legitimate concern. You don't want to bring in some schmuck into what seems mm-hmm. like a really, really good environment now. But you, you have to, you can't just ignore the past, but you can't let the past dictate your future. And right now it feels a lot like that. It feels like they are scared to repeat what happened last year. But guess what? Nothing about last year's Mets team is this year's Mets team. Nothing about it. It's two completely different situations. If you go through everything that happened last year with the Mets, it was one of the most embarrassing seasons they've ever had. And the only reason why we didn't really look at it that way is because we know that Steve Cohen was there and he could fix a lot of mistakes. Right. But it was one thing after another, the DeGrom injury, the Kumar Rocker thing. The, I mean, it just... Thumbs the, down. Right. You buy it thumbs with the down, fans. yeah. The Zach Scott and yep. his situation. And him coming out and saying that guys weren't uh, listening to the training staff. It was, it was one thing after another. Nothing about last year is this year, so stop thinking about it. And they put themselves, look, going into the season, the the two needs that the Mets had, to me, were obvious. They needed more bullpen. This is coming into the year. Mm-hmm. They needed more bullpen help, 
which I was just like, ah, no big. And people call it all oh, shallow. How could they let Luke go? Or they need this guy, that guy. I'm like, relax. They'll get it at the trade deadline. You could build bullpens in season. Like, you could find a guy or two to add to your pen in season, which obviously now they have a few hours to do here. But the other thing was a bat. Those should be easy things to acquire at the trade deadline. I mean, what's happening here? I'm not saying you got to get an all-star bat under control for the next two, three years. You need a a, a, a serviceable right-handed bat that – can get that stiff J.D. Davis the hell off the team. I can't wait till 6 o'clock because I don't want to see J.D. Davis in a Met <laughs> uniform anymore. So a right-handed, serviceable major league bat that could get J.D. Davis out of here and a, and two bullpen arms like – that it's we're not asking for a star. They're they're not asking for you know a, a top of the rotation pitcher. These should be easy things to acquire. And for some reason, the Mets are making it difficult. Like Scott Efros, who the Yankees got yesterday. That guy who's had a really really good year. And I know they gave up some sort of interesting prospect, uh, Hayden Wazinski, to get him. But so what? This guy's got five years of control. He's a he's a guy who throws from the side. He confuses people. I mean, that is a trade that I want the Mets to make. A right. guy like. That that right that we haven't heard of necessarily that's not a big name that right that yeah. that's having a great year right. and oh by the way isn't a rental right you know I mean I don't know why the Cubs would trade this guy I mean I guess bullpens are volatile from year mm-hmm. to year and you never really know and you get a prospect and maybe you could turn him into something but I mean that that trade may end up being the best one that the Yankees make honestly similar to what they make last year with Clay Holmes yes. where it's like Clay Holmes who the hell is this and now Clay Holmes is one of the better closers in the league well yeah now that's what they're thinking about with Lou Trevino who has been miserable this year right. who came in the Montez deal but this is this is a guy who's actually had a really good year for the Cubs right um, which you wouldn't really know because the Cubs have been miserable this year. But You're not really paying attention. Point to is, Cashman and the Yankees running circles around oh, the yeah. Mets. Yeah. I mean, the only excuse the Mets might have is saying, "Hey, look, we just started. This, you know, new front office. We just took over. We don't have the depth that those teams have built up over the years, so we can't trade from the lower levels or the lesser prospects. The only thing that we have that might be appealing right now is the top guys, and maybe that changes next year after all the draft picks this year. Who knows? But I don't even want to hear it. I don't want to hear about last year. I don't want to hear about the lack of depth. I know that there are moves to be made. If the Mets went to the Nationals, now I'm not saying that they should do this, but if they went to the Nationals and said, we want Josh Bell, we'll pay half of Corbin's salary, whatever it is. You don't think they could get Josh Bell? Of course. Of course they could. Now, you didn't give up any prospects. No. You got the best bat that's available on the market. They'd love it. And all you did was cost money. The the Nationals would die for that would. They would love it. I think he's got uh, two years, $60 million left. So what if you're Steve Cohen? Bring it in. Uh, And Josh Bell's a guy. He was actually the one guy I thought when Boomer asked me, who's the one guy, the big bat that you think the Mets are going to get? I have always thought it was Josh Bell. He's the best one there. Switch hitter. He's a legitimate five hitter. Hits for average, hits yep. with pop, you're familiar in the division, whatever. Point is, I, and I'm not saying that they should have to do all that just to get Josh Bell, but they can make a move without giving up prospects. Are you willing to do it? For me, if I'm evaluating this team, I say, look, not only what the Yankees are doing and they have a legitimate chance, I know that my team right now is one of the top teams, top five, top three in baseball. I'm going all in because, to your point, these seasons don't happen very often. Especially in the history of the New York Mets. All right, it is Boomer and Geo with Sal Lakata in for Boomer. 